RTB 101, where we discuss practical questions to equip you to share your faith more effectively. And here to help me talk about a very provocative question, did we evolve from an ancient common ancestor, is my colleague, Dr. Fuzz Rana. Welcome, Fuzz. Krista, thanks for having me. It's always great to have you here. And this is a very common question that comes up whenever we're talking about evolution. Uh, and I think every once in a while, we sort of hear in the news, you know, that scientists have discovered the last universal common ancestor. But I'm not really sure I 100% know what that term even means. So maybe we should start with some kind of definition. Yeah, well, um, the last universal common ancestor, sometimes it's called LUCA uh, for short, is believed to be uh, by evolutionary biologists, the organism or maybe a community of organisms that essentially anchor the evolutionary tree of life. And the view is that all life eventually emerges from this, this cell that again, anchors the evolutionary tree of life. And that this last universal common answer event, ancestor eventually gave rise to the two major branches on the tree of life, bacteria and archaea. And then from archaea, there was another branch that gave rise to what's known as the eukaryotic organisms. So I think that gives us a good place to start. So if I think about evolution as a tree, this is kind of something that is down near the roots of the tree that helps kind of be at the, that foundation from what I understand of everything comes from that. It, it, and you said it was a cell. Maybe you could tell me a little bit more about what kind of life form this is. Yeah. And, you know, you're right. The way to think about it is that this is, again, the, the organism or maybe a community of organisms that kind of root the evolutionary tree. And many people believe that that LUCA actually is the end product of the origin of life process where you have molecules on the early earth, presumably organizing into the very first cell-like entities that then would evolve to give rise to this, again, this organism called LUCA. And so LUCA would be, again, a, a, a simple type of cell, uh, but that the more that we are learning about what would be the requirements for LUCA from an evolutionary perspective, the uh, more troubling it really becomes, in my opinion, for the evolutionary paradigm, because we're learning that LUCA must have been an incredibly complex uh, organism that would have had it, the, the totality of the core biochemical systems that we see in all life on Earth in place. Uh, and, and so we're, the more we learn about what the requirements would be for LUCA, the more complex this organism becomes. That's really important. I think be, what I hear you saying in that is that this, this complexity in this was supposed to be the last universal common ancestor for life happens early. And, and so does that then just to extend that thought is, is that a problem for the evolutionary framework that it doesn't appear like it's, these things are gradually involved, evolved rather it, it needs to have full functioning complexity almost from the beginning? Yes, because the, the complexity is what our, our friend Michael Behe would call irreducible complexity. That is, not only does it look like the core biochemical systems are in place in LUCA, they have to be present. If they're not present, then LUCA simply would not uh, be capable of, of functioning as a, as a bona fide life form. And uh, when we look at the natural history of life on Earth, we see that life appears very early in Earth's history. As soon as the Earth can support life, life appears on the planet. Uh, it, it, there's a very, very narrow window of time for the origin of life to take place. And the geochemical and fossil record indicate that these first life forms, even though they were simple cells, biochemically speaking, they were incredibly complex organisms. And so then we see also that the demands on LUCA suggest that this was a complex organism where the biochemical systems that were present in it are irreducibly complex. So when you see that convergence of those different lines of, of evidence, it really seems to indicate that, uh, that, that LUCA must have been created, uh, that it could not have been the product of, of an evolutionary history. There's just not enough time to produce that kind of complexity 
in a, in, even in a simple cell. Well, I'm glad you, you led us to that kind of landing place there because let's flip the script a little bit for, for the second half of the segment. And from your perspective, as someone who is an old earth creationist, you know, lead us through a little bit of an understanding of what you think the first life was like from a creation model perspective. Yeah, well, you know, from my perspective, again, the very first life on earth would have been the product of a creator's handiwork. And that I would take the view that it would have, that that this life form would be uh, intrinsically complex and would also display uh, the features of a well-designed system. Uh, and, you know, interestingly enough, the, the, the argument that evolutionary biologists make for the existence of LUCA is a fact that uh, every organism on the planet has the same type of biochemistry. So the argument would be that this shared biochemistry uh, is evidence that life must have come from a, a single cell that would have already had that biochemistry in place. Uh, but my view would be that, that the universal nature of biochemistry re reflects shared design, not shared ancestry, and that the biochemical systems that make up life are highly elegant, sophisticated, fine-tuned systems that that reflect the design and the handiwork of a, of a creator. So from there then, from that kind of complex organism, even though it's a single-celled organism, it may look simple to me as a layperson, but if we were to look deeper, we would see truly how ornate that is. Um, but then I think it's also important to clarify from that life form, we would say that God then intervenes uh, periodically to create new life. We don't believe that life just evolved from that original, that original um, cellular organism. Yeah, that's a, a really good point of clarification, Krista, is that our view is that not only did God intervene to bring about the creation of the very first cell, but that throughout life's history, God is intervening repeatedly uh, to bring about his creative purposes. And that, that there's clear evidence for that intervention throughout life's history, uh, not only again at the origin of life, but at other key transitions in life's history as well. And that we would take the view too, that when we examine not only the, the, the appearance of these organisms, but the details of their design, we would see clear evidence for a creator's fingerprints. Well, thank you, Fuzz, for helping us think through this very fascinating topic. I want to refer people to Fuzz's blog, The Cell's Design. You can find it by going to reasons.org.